All right, we're ready to do our initial test firing of the engine. Um, so at this point, uh, we've made sure our spark plug wire is connected to the engine, our ignition wire is connected to the battery, we have power, we have spark, uh, we've put a little bit of fuel in the tank, and the cowl is off so we can see what we're doing. We can make uh, tuning adjustments and, and all that. Uh, another thing is I like to keep an eye on the fuel here when we're first starting an engine. Uh, that way you know the fuel is actually getting up there. So it's really important uh, because if you're just flipping away, you don't know what's going on. If you don't see the fuel actually go up to the engine, it can be really difficult sometimes to know if the fuel is actually there or not. And then you got to take the spark plug out, kind of see if there's any fuel on it or if it's dry. And so it just makes it a lot easier if you have the cow off and you really pay attention to if fuel is, is coming in there or not. All right, guys. Well, I got my, uh, my test pop done here. It, it was running, and what I basically had to do, I ended up uh, just forcing a little bit of fuel into the line here. I actually squirted a little bit directly into the carb here too to try and get a siphon going on the engine. And even with that, I had to do full choke, full throttle, and flip for quite a while before it would start drawing fuel and, and give me a pop. Uh, but now that it is, so that, that's pretty typical with new engines. These carbs are dry, and um, they just don't siphon very well at first. So you gotta kinda get them primed, and then you shouldn't have any problems. But this has been started once. We'll see how it does here. Just maybe choke it back up here. There we go. And then it should be ready to roll. All right, that's perfect, guys. Um, I got. A little bit of, uh, before I tune it and all that, I'm not gonna do that in this video, we've got other videos on that, uh, but I gotta get the second exhaust dump on there and do a couple finishing touches, and then we'll uh, get to the field and start doing some test flights. All right guys, we made it to the field. Uh, I think she's all ready to go. So what we're gonna do first, we're gonna do just a brief two, three minute flight, get, get the vibrations on everything, land it, and check over all the bolts and everything again. So highly recommend you do this step. All right, so we put uh, just a quick flight on it, and of course we did have a couple bolts we had to tighten up. Muffler gasket came out, so we had to tighten that up. We're gonna be flying without that. Hopefully we can uh, get, get uh, through the rest of the flights without that on there. But we had a couple other small bolts that we had to tighten up, but nothing major. So now we're gonna start working on uh, laterally and, and horizontally balancing the plane. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna take it up and uh, we're gonna trim out the plane so it has the exact same behavior upright and inverted. So if, if we're flying across and it's going straight and level upright, and then we go inverted and it starts dipping off, I'm gonna start trimming it out to have down trim in it uh, so that when I'm upright, it starts going down, but then inverted, it starts coming up. So those lines start intersecting until I have the exact same curve. At that point, I'll know that uh, it's trimmed neutral and that it's nose heavy. Now, if it did the opposite thing, if it was curving up, both ways, then it would be tail heavy and we'd have to adjust the CG uh, towards the nose. However, I tend to go slightly nose heavy because it's easier to correct at the field with tail weight than it is to add nose weight. You have to add two to three times as much weight on the nose as you do on the tail uh, to correct CG issues. Alright guys, so at this point I just gave it probably two or three clicks of down and uh, it looks like now it's got about the same curve upright as it does inverted. That's hands off upright. No, that's hands off inverted. So we're, we're a little opposite now, so let's try that again. Yeah, that's pretty close. Um, right now, I've got my trim 
adjustment set to five steps. So really what I need to do is end up kind of turning it down to just one or two steps at a time. In your radio, you can, you can basically adjust how many steps it changes for every click of trim. So right now the problem is that's pretty close. Both of them are doing about the same thing. All right guys, so hopefully you can see that in the flight that they both, I got trimmed out so upright, it had a slight curve and inverted it had a slight curve. Almost the exact same thing. It wasn't real severe, uh, but it was, it was definitely significant and noticeable. In a plane this size, just based off that, that curve that I saw and experience, I would say that I'm gonna need probably one to two ounces of weight in the tail. Um, that can be a lot of weight. In a smaller plane, you add one ounce, that, that could be a major amount. You probably wanna take it slow, but just, I'm gonna go ahead and go for it. Probably add about one to start. Um, I, I can handle a tail heavy plane too, but the last thing you wanna do, if you're not experienced, you're not comfortable, don't end up adding a ton of weight and, and getting a real tail heavy plane. Those are the hardest to control and land. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and start with four pieces of this quarter ounce weight, and we'll see if it starts leveling out. So guys, I just put an ounce of weight on the tail wheel. This will be real easy to remove um, when I'm ready to, cause I'll go back home and once I get a the CG set right, I'm gonna mark it on the wing, take this weight off and move things around until I'm balancing on that point that I marked on the wing. So let's give this a try, see if it's flying straight now. All right guys, so this is the hands off upright and I'll go right to inverted. Pretty darn close. I, that's, uh, that was my first guess of one ounce and it's real, real close. So I think that's gonna be our, our starting CG point. It features a 40-inch wingspan and an airfoil wing for a superior outdoor performance in light to moderate wind. The electronics package is plenty of power.